don't make us who we are So I'll dream until I make it real And all I see is Hello guys <laughs> Welcome back to Mentorship Mondays with Michelle and Marin. We are now on episode number three and this is so, so exciting. We're so glad that you guys are here and thank you so much for um, once again um, being here with us. You know, it's so weird because I always start out with my healing heart videos as high hearts, welcome hearts. And I, and, and now I'm, I feel like I need to say something different. I'm like, I don't know, what should we call, what should we call everybody watching the mentorship Mondays? I have to think oh, about that. So to you think guys about put that. something in the comments. Put something in the comments. Yes. What we should, how we should address you, how you would like us to address you. I think that's important. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the topic today. So, um, Marin, I'm going to ask you to start because what what we were talking about now, this again did come up in one of the questions and it came up from, I think it was Diane that gave us this one and it's a really good one. Um, and both Marin and I were talking about it because we both know what it's like to be on one end looking and we know what it's yeah. like to be on the other end doing. So we yes. really want to share this with you guys and debunk the mystical of how this is really going on. So take it away, yeah. Marin. So I feel like my internet's really slow. Sorry. Um, so Diane said, and she's afraid to tell people what she's seeing. And um, oh my gosh, yes, because I feel like there is such a, um, uh, I don't know what the word is, illusion of what we actually do. So I thought when I saw you like, oh, my grandma's like, really? She's right there. She's talking to you word for word. And, um, and you're really hearing her and you're just translating it to me. But really, it's like the ultimate game of charades. Like you get a flash of an image and then you get a feeling and then you hear a word and then you get this overall concept and then all of a sudden you're taken over here and then you feel a tapping right there. And, and there's just so much that you have to translate. And it is so um, different than I ever thought. It's, like a, it's, it's literally like the world's biggest game of charades. And, um, also I feel like, and I tell people this a lot, like God just gave me a Tesla and I've got to figure out what all the buttons mean. Like, I just got like this upgrade and like, I'm like, now I'm feeling this and I have no idea what it is. And don't think I'm crazy if I guess it wrong, or don't think it's not really your loved one. If I guess it wrong, because I'm, it's all new to me. Like I'm just guessing, but it's all real. I swear it's real. I'm not crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. So that has been really hard. And, um, and like I talked about in the first video, like the bravery, um, I remember it was like literally only like the third week of doing this. And my neighbor's mother came to me and mm -hmm. I was like, okay, uh, well, I'll take your message and see what I get. Um, and if it's good, then I'll think about the next step, which is passing it along. So I got the message. It was really clear images. I felt like I was really, it was really her. And so I said, okay, well, I did my part. I took the messages. You do your part. It has to be the most perfect situation for me to share this message. And um, I, and so I said, she, she's got lots of kids. She's always coming and going. And like, I never see her like, for more than two minutes. And so I said, if I'm supposed to share this information, I want her to be outside of her house on a day where I can just sit next to her and share my story and tell the story to her. And she doesn't have anywhere to go. Like, it's very clear that she's sitting here waiting for this information, which has never happened, never had seen her sit. And like a week later, the first, the first week it rained all week. And I was like, okay, I'm clearly not supposed to share this information. But the first sunny day, I kid you not, I saw her sitting on her front lawn and I was like, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, nothing, got nowhere to go. This kid's here, this kid's there. I'm just sitting enjoying the day. And I was like, oh, okay, that means I've got to share my story. <laughs> 
And so, um, so I was like, well, there's something you don't know about me. Uh, I just recently learned I have this ability and, um, uh, uh, well, I think your mom came to me. I was so nervous and, um, I got done and I was like, and my head, like I said, I had to run in because I wrote everything down. So I had to run in and get my journal. So, and then run back out to her to like share everything. And um, when I ran in, I go, oh my gosh, I'm telling the neighbor to my husband. And so I come back in from telling her and he goes, well, how did it go? And I said, oh, it was not what I expected. I felt like I got invited to a party and my invitation said it was a pool party, but really it was a party with a bunch of nuns. And I showed up in my bikini. <laughs> like I just felt so vulnerable and so like, Oh, that was not what I expected. Like you, like, you know, when I realized I had this, I go, Oh, the people I'm going to help. And it's going to be so amazing. And I'm going to tell my, you know, tell them these wonderful messages. And then it was my first turn to like, tell like a real person messages. And um, I was like, that was so intimidating. So, so, so like vulnerable. So, um, so being afraid to tell people what you see, I totally get it. And then when you asked me about like this whole um, doing this uh, project online, this mentorship Mondays online was like, oh gosh, now the world's going to know. And I like literally was like, oh, now I know what it feels like to come out of the closet. Like this is just like, oh, like, so yes, I can like 100% relate from everything from like the. you know, are they going to understand what I'm seeing and going through to like the everything? That's true. So go ahead. And, and, you know, like, so I'm glad that you brought up the, okay, so show me the moment and, you know, okay, God, show me the moment. If this is the moment that I'm meant to do this, these are the conditions because those are the conditions I had too, at one point. Um, well, I still do because I don't approach people just randomly and say I see this standing behind you or anything I I don't do that um if I feel called to and here's my conditions is they have to be um they have to make it obvious so I said help make it obvious um say some key things to me such as what has happened um sitting in a doctor's office and somebody says so my brother passed a couple days ago and like very specific circumstances and and this has happened and while I was going through treatment and finishing up my treatment I'd be sitting in the cancer clinic or you know at numerous doctor's office and I did a lot of practice readings in doctor's offices because that was just where I was and the circumstances always presented themselves perfectly it would always be these moments where it was just the two of us you know, they would, they would bring it up. They would start, or they'd start to talk about life after death and, well, I believe in it. Or I, and I'm like, well, here we go. Here we go. And out it would come. But that was amazing because again, what is it doing? It's like helping the belief system. It's that right moment, the right time. But does it always turn out the way that our minds thinks it's going to? No, it doesn't that person that we're giving a message to they may be in a little bit of shock and disbelief um sometimes people express it sometimes people don't everybody's different on how they receive it what we have to trust is when we are in the moment if the conditions are what we have built them to be because this is the belief system so you made an arrangement you knew that was your moment you knew that was your moment just the same as I knew when somebody said certain words to me, that's my moment to go. And then it's our choice. It's been put in our hands. We've been presented the opportunity. Now it's our choice to say, okay, I'm going to do this. And we jump off the diving board and we do it. And it may not be comfortable and it takes a lot of practice to get comfortable with it, but we do it. And then we have to go through the practice of letting go. And letting go of, I did it. I did it. And I did the best of my ability. And I gave the information. And now I'm going to let go 
and be okay with knowing that that person may not come back to me and say anything or did that information get validated you know because sometimes people don't say anything you know it's a little different when we're doing that in a circumstance like and i'm really glad you brought that up it's a little different out in public like that or doing it with somebody in that way than when somebody's coming right directly to you for a session you know but um but even still there's so much we're doing, like I say, that charades game. Yes. You know, of how we take in information. Yes. And let's talk about that for a second because that is true. Um, I remember seeing Teresa Caputo live. And this was long before I started doing this myself. And I remember trying to understand because I could feel the messages. Like I could feel it. And when she would give a message, she would talk about how you know, that message could apply to many different people. And I remember kind of like trying to understand how she was receiving it and not fully understanding it. And that really played in my head when I was starting my own quest, because I would have this idea of how it's happening. And through my own exploration, the more I understood that, wait a minute, this is much more subtle than I understood it to be. It's not necessarily um, them standing. Now, there are people that do see spirit and say they see spirit quite clearly standing beside them. There are people that hear, but we have to also remember too, spirit is not equipped with the voice box. This is not a physical experience. This is, spirit is the emotional body, the emotional body and energy. And so we're often getting the information through multiple channels, you know, and, and because everybody's different, we might be um, hearing. And when I say hearing, um, yes, there are times and Marin, I know you've heard it too, where you hear a word and it has the resonance of a man's voice or a resonance of a woman's voice. So yes, that does happen. But when we're in this mode of channeling and bringing through the information, there are images that look like daydreams. It's a daydream space. So yes, it's all third eye, but it's a daydream space. And so they're bringing images of things that we will recognize because we have a Rolodex within us of our own experiences. So when a spirit's coming to us, they're using our internal Rolodex. What is this person going to connect to? What's the easiest way? And so this is why if somebody's really focused on and the belief is I can only feel, I can only feel. Well, if your belief is I can only feel, then that's the only way you're going to get that, that information. You're going to feel it. And you might be like, why can't I hear? Why can't I? Well, if you're blocking off the other, they're going to do it in the way that you're going to hear it until you're ready to start moving on, right? Until you're ready to grow because we can open up everything we might do it in different ways one might be stronger for you than another mine might be dominant and most people do have two that are dominant but it is more like um a, i say it's it's a talent it's a um you know it, it's not this um flashing lights and they're telling us word for word verbatim and i i'm I like to explain to people when they come to me, you know, this is how this is happening for me. Your loved ones are here. I can tell there's a male here. I can tell there's a female here. Um, I can tell uh, they're telling me how they passed. When I say they're telling me how they passed, I'm feeling it in my body. I can tell it's a heart attack because of the squeezing that I'm getting in my chest. Or I can tell there was something in the brain because of a sensation I get across the brain. So they are identifying with me first, they're passing. And like, this is my way of doing it. Everybody may have a different way of identifying. Then they start to move into more of their personality, more of their, you know, but that's coming through the body, that's coming through images. Um, a lot of, uh, um, I get a lot of spirits that will bring up my family's car dealership growing up and will show me the classic cars 
And so when I see the classic cars coming up, I know that this person was a collector. They loved cars or they had a really special car, you know, so all of these things are coming up. And then sometimes, you know, you might get one that is more dominant in one way where they're giving you a lot of visual, a little bit of feeling. And then all of a sudden you hear music going through and hear a phrase of a song that starts to fly through. So, you know, it's really a practice of continuing to have this uh, communication, this translation of all these different things that are occurring. And when you're on the other side, meaning you're on the other side of the screen or the table, or you're the sitter, you're seeing it as this back and forth verbatim conversation. But um, it is a talent, it, you know, because it takes practice to to translate and to work that all together. But, you know, it, it's, I think, a really big mystifier or debunker to say that it's not happening in that exact verbatim way. And when somebody gets it in their head that, oh, well, so-and-so is doing it this way. And this is, this is how like they're hearing word for word and getting it in this exact way. And I don't get it that way. So I'm not communicating, you know, and that's right. a really big disservice I feel right? because I get people saying that to me all the time. Well, I don't hear <laughs> like you do, Michelle. I don't hear in the same way. Well, no, you're not recognizing how you're hearing it yet. I think that's the biggest disservice ever because that, you know, I talk about, well, looking back, I've had this my whole life. Well, it's portrayed, <laughs> excuse me, it's portrayed on TV. Like there's like these real people in front of the medium. Well, I'm not seeing these real people in front of the medium. So it's not real. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then it wasn't until it wasn't until you um, said in one of your things, it's in your imagination. It's like a memory. Like if you were to say, okay, where did I place my keys? And you're going to think in your head and go through your day. That is how you're seeing it. And I like, then it clicked and I was like, oh, well, that's been happening my whole life. Like, right. Oh, you know? right. So, right. Um, and, that's, and, and what Eric had said to me one time was he says, where do you think imagination? He goes, image, imagination, image. He goes, it's the image. And he goes, and, and that is where spirit drops things in. Yes. So it's, and I remember when I heard that, I'm like, oh, right. And it's so quick. So yes. one time um, my husband was telling me a story and I like was so far off topic with my, com- with my like follow-up, you know, like he was talking about football. And then all of a sudden I started talking about like, where we're going to go on vacation. And he was like, how did that even connect? And I think it was like one of the first times where I actually like connected my thoughts. And I was like, well, football reminded me of this, which reminded me of that, which taught me about that, which looked like this, which took me over there. And I got there. And he's like, you had all those thoughts in like two seconds. I said, yeah, I did actually. And like, that's how it is. So it's like so quick. You just don't even notice it sometimes. Yes. So it has been happening your whole life. It's yes. just so fast. And this, and I can see where like, you think it's your own thought because you literally, you had your own thought, then maybe another thought, then spirit slipped in a thought on you. And then, you know, um, exactly. That is such a good way of showing it. And, um, you know, even as you're saying that I, I, cause I can't tell you how many times I've done that very same thing where somebody's telling me something. And then I just spit something out that is like way over there because of going through that whole that is exactly yeah. how it is. And so now when you, when you put this together with intentionally connecting, so, yeah. so we're intentionally sitting here and we're bringing a spirit through yeah. and we're intentionally having this um, moment of healing. Well, not only are we vibrationally in this, uh, I call it like a cocoon because there's a special, like almost like a, a field of energy that you can feel when you're in this moment, that spirit is holding us in this moment to have this connection. And it's like a battery because everybody's got to be plugged in to this battery. So this is happening. So what's going on in here and all across here is 
for the purpose of, because that's your intention. Okay. And from what we said last episode, mm -hmm. this is like, it's full circle now. I'm totally understanding everything. <laughs> so, um, so being intentional and like, for me, it was slowing down, right. It's the way it feels to me when I like live purposefully and intentionally, I feel like much slower. And so I had a reading this morning and I could feel the spirit with me all morning. Um, but I'm like living my life. Right. So I'm, I had just dropped the kids off at camp and I was thinking about something. I can't remember what I was thinking about and I'm having my own specific thoughts. And then all of a sudden I notice that there is like background music playing in my head that I like, if I wasn't intentional that I would have missed the background music. Right. But it was like, once I was like slowed down and I realized, wait a minute, I'm having my own thoughts. And then this is in the background. Like that has to be from spirit because okay. it's like, you know, but I would have missed it if I just would have been like, you know, but I just had pulled into the garage and I was stopped for a moment. And then I was like, wait a minute, this music's been playing. And, um, and so I, you know, and it relates to um, the reading. So yeah. Yeah, things like that you miss. So it's so important to have that intentionality. And maybe this has been going around on around you your whole life. Yes. But then once you have that, that intention and that mindfulness and that slowing down and being mm -hmm. conscious, as you say, then all of a sudden you start to notice the spirit messages. Mm -hmm. Very much so, because, you know, they're like I said, everything is connected and I'll bring it up again when I saw the fabric, the grid, the grid of the earth or uh, through us, um, what that said to me was that everything in our universe, everything in our world, everything around us is an ability to be able to give us a message. We can read, reading for myself. So I read for myself. I uh, intuitively you know, ask questions for myself and the direction that I'm going and things that I need to know about my family and that. But it doesn't mean that I'm always sitting right down and talking to spirit this way. It's the music that I'm hearing. It's the, the signs, the symbols, the butterflies, the birds, the music in the background, the, the phrases, everything that's happening is it's like it moves around me and then when I know it's not connected to me you know it, it, and and you get to know that the more you do it you get to know when there's that intention you know you're connecting with somebody soon and for me it's because I've got certain times of the day that are set for sessions so they tend to come in around my lunchtime I do healings in the morning and when I'm doing my afternoon sessions they they'll come in and it's so funny because I'll eat my lunch and I'll brush my teeth and I often have somebody around me giving me something at that time whether it's a visual or it's it's a phrase or it's something and it's always connected to that next person and I'll tell you something this is just a little bit of a story but I'll tell you something I had this um one client and this is my favorite I thought this was just an amazing experience the night before I had this dream and I had not quite experienced it this way. So it was, it was really interesting, but I had this dream and I was in a church in a cathedral and it was this beautiful ornate looking cathedral. And I was in there giving readings. So I was walking up and down the aisles and I would see all of these people, but behind them were spirit people. And I could tell they were spirit people. So I'd give a reading to somebody and I was describing who the person was behind them and then that that spirit person would say tell them this tell them this and so I would say they're saying this to you well then there's this this man started speaking to me and he started telling me things and then he brought his dog brought a dog and he sat the dog in front of me and he sat by himself on this pew this bench and, it, and so when I woke up, I specifically remembered, you know, certain things, but I remembered this man and the dog and the leash and the bench. And so I had a group reading that night and, or the next night. And 
it was a, it was a great reading. Everything was good. And right towards the end, I heard tell them about the dream. Wow. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to say this to you. I'm going to tell you something. So I told them about the dream. Well, wasn't that dream the, they had a church. There's a church that their family for generations has gone to. And there's a specific bench that they sit at always, the mother and father, or the um, two, it's mother and daughter, rather. Um, the uh, mother, had, she had lost her son. It was her son that was in the dream and her dog that was in the dream that had come through. So I wasn't putting the pieces completely together during the session, but he wanted to let them know that he was at this church and this, this church they go to every Sunday. And I described it to them. That was the exact church. And to me, that moment was like, and I would have slipped right past that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't know that that was going to be for those people. Yeah. Or have that premonition or understanding. That's sometimes how it happens, right? We'll have these, you know, a spirit will come to us or we'll have some sort of a, a moment and you get to know as you trust when, it, you know, you don't recognize something or you don't recognize somebody or, you know, you get to know that it's going to fit somewhere. And so the, in that moment, that was just like when they said, say the dream. And that was a moment like, do I want to tell them my whole dream? <laughs> what happened in this dream but that was really significant to them and was yeah. really special for them that is that trust part yeah that, yeah no yeah. that's incredible yeah that's really fast side note too that is really fascinating about the grocery store setting because I feel like whenever I'm in the grocery store I always try to describe the people that I'm passing so I can get better at descriptions there must be some like weird grocery store thing but um but yeah that is just that is beautiful yeah you know trust what they're saying and trust that it's them I have a hard time I've had a couple spirits come to me before a reading mm -hmm. and and again this kind of goes with what we talked about last week like the um spontaneous versus um intentional they're so vivid and so clear and so like 3d mm -hmm. and then I'll have a reading and the spirit presents more like they'll show me like a celebrity that they might look like, or they'll show me like a certain feature or maybe they won't show me anything at all. Mm -hmm. And I'll read for them. And then like afterwards, the, um, the person will show me like a picture of who it was and I'll be like, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that was that person from the other night like but I didn't make the connection like right, right. it's like spinning image in my dream or in my spontaneous you know spirit experience mm -hmm. and then I come to the reading and it's like I don't know so maybe it's like that belief that it yes there, that it and, belief believe, and I'll tell yeah. you something else too because um when for channeling Eric when we're doing um like celebrities bringing celebrities and a lot of well-known people um there's sometimes we know in advance we might know 24 hours or, or maybe even like a couple hours in advance but a lot of times we don't and um when it comes to a celebrity for me what I always say to Eric is okay I I'm not going to ask right because we don't we don't choose for ourselves um, it usually gets brought in one way or another, or it gets selected for us. But I always like to kind of play this game with spirit. Like if I feel drawn, so sometimes if a celebrity passes, you, you can feel something, right? You feel like some sort of a connection, like, oh, they, they're probably going to come through at some point. So we don't go out looking for them. Eric brings them to us. And um, there's some real specific ones in this past I would say past five years or four years that I've been doing it and um what would happen is like I always say to Eric okay bring whoever it is if it's meant to be this person or you know just let me know it has to be kind of organic how it all comes through and sure enough it would either be a dream um it was like with um Naomi Judd with that one um I could feel her and I, and I knew she was around me and I wasn't communicating with her yet, but I knew she was around me. 
And that day I went uh, shopping and I was getting some t-shirts for my son. And the only t-shirt that was in his size that was on this rack was a Nashville, this Nashville t-shirt. Oh my God. Guitar. And I'm like, and I knew as soon as I saw it, I'm like, okay. I'm like, so obviously it's going to be her. And I didn't know. I didn't know until that next day, sitting right in front of Elisa. She's like, you know, do you want to do Naomi Judd? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, that, and I knew. But sometimes it is that subtle. Um, sometimes we'll have dreams. Like I've had dreams where they'll speak to me a couple weeks before they come in for a session. And then they just get put on the roster that, hey, did you want to do so-and-so? And so you just know, but, um, cause I get a lot of people ask or, or will even comment saying, you know, like let them rest in peace, leave them alone. Don't, don't bother uh -huh. them. Oh yeah. And, and, you're like and I'm like, but it's not like that because if a spirit didn't want to speak, there's nothing you can do right. to, to force a conversation with a spirit. Right. They don't work that way, you know? And, um, anyway, I don't know why I felt the need to throw that part in there, but, but it's, um, it's, it's really, um, I think that the biggest message with all of this is it's really important to not look at something and put an expectation on it to how it really is because it, it's the underworkings and that's really what we're here to do. We're yeah. here to, to really take away the mystery yeah. to all of it and really show this process and what it's all about. And to help more people recognize it within themselves yeah. and to recognize how it's, it's happening. And for everybody watching, it's happening to all of you all day long, Yeah, you know, and there's ways that we can kind of slow things down, as you say, to be able to really pick up on it. Yeah. Was there anything else that you were thinking there? Well, I kind of had like a full circle moment in my head. So the question was, they're afraid to tell people what they're seeing and um well, it was such a complete circle it's out <laughs> but that's um, it. see and that's a that's a channeling thing right there how many times have I already done that today yes yes no it was like full concept went in I was like it's unbelievable yep. never forget it it's out yep. <laughs> um no like literally like everything just <laughs> made so much sense in that moment um Okay. Yes. I remember right now. So, okay. um, okay. So many concepts to unpack in this, yeah. but, um, being afraid to tell people and, and it's the belief, um, in yourself and being brave, mm -hmm. but also, um, something that you said, why you felt the need to tell that story is mm -hmm. the judgment. Yes. Um, yes. and we're afraid because these people Well, I'm afraid I'm personally, I'll speak for myself. I am afraid that people are going to judge me. Yeah. And then you have to dig within. I think this is something we talked about on the second week is about um, like that negative self-talk and like he, and something I thought about during that, that episode too, was like, one thing I was like, I really have to work on. I have this, I came into this with the misnomer about mediums and I was so judgmental. I didn't really know that it was real. And now that hangs with me because now I put my feelings about mediums on every single person that comes to me, um, for the reading. Mm -hmm, right. And so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people might not necessarily feel the way I feel like my neighbor, she was just like overjoyed, like so happy that I, and she's like, what a gift. That's amazing. Da, da, da. And I'm like, Oh, you're not judging me. Like, that's what I thought was going to happen. You know? So I have some help self healing, work to do with, I'm projecting my, uh, emotions onto what I feel, how people are going to perceive me. And that's something I have to work on. And so as far as like being brave and, and this person's question, like how you're afraid to tell people, well, what are you thinking about yourself or what were your initial, um, thoughts on what mediumship was? Yes. Because my whole, that's what you said when you said this, they're not like that. They won't come to you. If my whole perception of what is the afterlife, what is reality, what is life has changed since this experience. Yeah. And I, and I just need to sit with that and, you know, 
Yeah. I don't know. That was a really big concept there. You can probably articulate that a lot better, yeah. but um, no, that's, that's perfect because that, that really is the truth. And, um, I think what, you know, going on channeling Eric and, um, putting myself out there in that way, I opened myself up to a lot of judgment and it did take a bit to get used to that. You know, I had to build myself to a certain point before that. And that's been a lot of healing work because I was very judgmental of my myself, very critical of myself. And I didn't think I was judgmental of other people, but I was. And I can I can see that because I was able to start to break down where I was projecting things and where I was feeling it. So exactly what you said, you know, mm -hmm. if you're feeling something and you're feeling judged, well, you know, there is something because when we have any type of uh, strong emotion within us, it's coming from something within us. It doesn't mean that, you know, somebody is right, say, in doing something. So if somebody says something nasty to you, right, and it evokes a strong feeling within you and it hurts, it's the, it hurts and are you sticking with it and it's having a problem within you. If you have a reaction to something and you've worked through it and you've healed it, you're able to kind of understand, okay, I can see where that came from, understand why that person did it. Doesn't mean I'm going to allow it. I might decide not to communicate with that person anymore. I might, you know, but if, if it has been worked through, you're able to kind of move past it and step aside. But if it's something that's creating a barrier within you, that, yeah. it's, you know, it's running over and over in your head or it's something that's stopping you from doing something that you want to do. Then you want to look at it and, and really understand, just as Marin said, um, what is it within me? What's within me? You know, um, and going on channeling Eric kind of was like a big hammer over the head. It was like doing that great big crack you know, to, to really face a lot of criticism, but also a lot of good stuff. So it's, yeah. that, it's that choice of what do I want to pay attention to? Do I want to hear the little voices over here that are carrying on that have a problem or are negative? Or do I want to look at all the beauty in this? Do I want to sit in that energy? And that's the choice that I make over and over. But it, it's it's a process to work through that. But um, I think that this was a really a really good question. It brings up a lot of brings up a lot of different areas because like when you said there's things to unpack, there really are a lot of things to unpack and all of that. Yeah. What are you okay. thinking? Anything else that you want to address? No, I think that's it. That was my full circle moment where I realized, you know, it's just it really is when you. Uh, it, with anything in life, when you live your authentic self, you're going to feel and resonate and feel so good, you know, and, um, and that is how I get over, you know, I realize I did, I'm afraid to tell people because I'm afraid of the judgment. So when I realize it's okay, it's my authentic self that helps me realize that the judgment is not, not anything. It's not here nor there, you know, because I'm living my authentic self. That's right. Um, but then also that being said, uh, uh, the other part of the question is you can't just pop a reading on someone. Like you said, you've got to set up your circumstances and you've got to make sure that if you are going to tell a stranger about something, then, um, you know, make sure that it's, it's, you've got your yeah. guidelines with spirit. So, you know, it will be taken because, because you don't want to just, you know, pop yeah. that on people. So, yeah. So talking to people in general, coming out, the coming out story deal with judgment. And then, you know, if they were talking about like, just in general, telling people, um, have your guidelines. So that was my, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. We should end these off with, um, full circle moments with Mary. Yeah. Recaps. Yeah. I like that. Cause we do. We're, we go. <laughs> there's we so much like there the, really is there really is so connected that you could yeah. go forever yeah. on those topics yeah. you know yeah we could we could have hour long events here we really <laughs> could because there's there's really so much to it and I think that's what's so exciting about it too is it's just this is like fuel 
it's information it's fuel yes and and I know you feel that I feel that too or else we wouldn't be here yeah Correct. all right well guys thanks a lot don't forget to put down underneath what what should what name should we use I feel like we need to sign oh, it yeah. off with a, we need to sign it off with something I mean I always use hearts but that's the healing heart this is a slightly different thing that we're doing here so we need to have we need to have something so put your thoughts in the comments and we'll have a little fun with that and on our next episode we'll we'll address it so, all right well thanks Marin. Again. Yeah, no, thank you, Michelle. Thank you guys for listening. And thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.